Now coming to the discussion of brown sequat syndrome. Already I told you in the sensory system itself, whenever we are discussing the dorsal column as well as the uh, ventrolateral spinothalamic tract, we have seen that brown sequat syndrome is nothing but the hemisection of spinal cord. We are doing a hemisection at the spinal cord level. That is most important. So we are not cutting at any other level. We are doing it at the spinal cord level. So what will happen? At the spinal cord, two ascending tracks are going and one descending track that is the corticospinal track which we saw now it is coming down so all these tracks can get damaged so first let's try to recall a bit so first coming to the dorsal column pathway the dorsal column pathway started in the periphery and where was the decussation happening we have highlighted the decussation the decussation happens at the level of medulla then it went to the thalamus and finally to the somatosensory cortex then where was the crossing over happening for the case of lateral spinothalamic tract? This lateral spinothalamic tract, as it has been highlighted here, the crossing over is happening at the level of at the level of the spinal cord itself. They will cross, then they will ascend. As if you wanted to see it from the sensory system again. Then coming to the descending tract, that is the corticospinal tract. I said, where is the crossing over? The crossing over happens at the level of medulla. Now, what we are going to do? We are going to put a lesion. As seen in the diagram here, here we are trying to put a lesion on the right side. So, let's see what will happen of these three tracks. So, whenever I put a lesion for the dorsal column on the right side, which side sensation is gone? The sensation on the same side, that is the ipsilateral. Ipsilateral side is gone in case of a dorsal column. Whenever I put a same right lesion here, what is happening? Trace it back. Trace it back. It goes here to the left side. So, spinothalamic tract, already we have seen the contralateral side sensation is lost. Then, coming to the corticospinal tract, what is happening? The crossing over is the level of the medulla. So, if I cut it here, what will happen? There will be paralysis on the same side. So, ipsilateral paralysis because corticospinal tract is a motor tract. So, ipsilateral paralysis will happen. Now, let us discuss the feature of it. Now, what are the features? So, features of bound sequat syndrome, there is ipsilateral loss of dorsal column. What all the sensation carried by it? Fine touch, pressure, vibration and proprioception. Contralateral loss of spinothalamic tract. Contralateral loss of spinothalamic tract which induces the pain and temperature. Just remember, there is contralateral loss of pain and temperature. Because in options, they always give one option which is ipsilateral loss of pain and temperature or contralateral for the other two tracks. Only contralateral tract is the spinothalamic tract. Then, ipsilateral loss of corticospinal tract. If corticospinal ipsilateral loss is there, there will be ipsilateral paralysis will be there. Spat, spastic kind of paralysis will be there. So, loss of pain and temperature are only happening in the contralateral side. In the contralateral side, pain and temperature we should remember.